So what I want to go over today is the power system that I'm creating for my refrigerator because it has to be a different system than what I've created for cooking. And the reason is <clears throat> in my previous video when I showed you how I set up the inverter and was able to plug things into it like the toaster oven or the burner or my instant pot, um, that is a thou uh, provides up to a thousand watts. So you don't want to run it when the car's off. You need to only run it when the engine is on or the car's on so that it doesn't drain the battery and then leave you without your ability to start your car. So the difference with the refrigerator is when I, it has to be on all the time. When I'm cooking, I can turn on the car, um, turn on the inverter, plug in the toaster oven, cook something, turn it off, unplug everything and I'm done. But during the day when I'm working uh, or I'm out interviewing people or doing other things, the car's not gonna be running, but the refrigerator has to constantly be going or else things are going to go bad inside because it's not gonna maintain that roughly 37, 35 degree temperature that you want for uh, a refrigerator to maintain. So what I'm doing is the, the system I've designed to continuously run the refrigerator is this Jackery. Uh, this is a power station. It's a camping battery, basically. Uh, a lot of campers use it to charge things when they're out camping. Uh, this is the Jackery Explorer 160, and that means it's a 160 watt power station. So when it's fully charged up, um, and you can see this one's 85% charge because I've been messing around with it in my car trying to see how much energy my refrigerator uses when it's running and when it's just kind of idling and not running its cooling system. Um, so this has 85% charge um, and um, my refrigerator, when it is running and actually cooling everything and bringing the temperature down, it'll draw like 80 watts. Um, this, this power station is rated up to 150 watts continuous, so it's not gonna overload this. This will handle it just fine. But at a 160 watt power station, if my refrigerator were running constantly, it would only provide power for two hours. Now, what I've done is I brought that refrigerator inside my house, plugged it in, was been running it for the last week. So I've got it nice and conditioned to be at the temperature that I want. So it only needs to turn on periodically in order to uh, maintain that temperature now that the whole cooler has gotten down to the temperature that I want as a refrigerator. So the calculations that I've run is that when plugged into this, this will can provide power up to 24 hours for that refrigerator. And that's good because there may be days when I'm just not driving much. I may be at the uh, WeWork office working all day. Um, I, it may be nice out, so I'm not running my car at night to provide uh, power for the air conditioning or heating system. And so I just may not have my car on for a long time. And so this will provide backup power. Now, I don't want this thing to get drained down because I'm not running my car and then and then have to find a way to recharge it because when this gets drained down to zero, it takes up to five hours to recharge this whole thing. So I'd have to take it into an office or somewhere and plug it in for five hours to charge it up. I don't want to do that because that's a, a bit of a pain to do. And it's also just not ethical to go in and plug stuff into an office's outlets and take their power. So what I did is... Um, Jackery, the brand that makes this power station, also makes these solar panels to charge them. So, and again, this is a great resource if you're going to live in your car is the innovations and technologies and products that are in the camping world. So this is created so if you're out camping and you're charging things like your phone or running your refrigerator on your Jackery power station, um, you can recharge it with this, which recharges this station when it's in full sunlight uh, in less than five hours, about four and a half hours. Um, now, I will have this I will have this plugged into my car so when I am driving, the car will charge it. But when I'm not driving, I'll have it plugged into this. Uh, and what I want to do is find a way to uh, put this on the top of my car where it gets maximum sunlight. The WeWork uh, office that I'm going to be working in primarily in Palo Alto, 
has a nice big workroom and huge windows that overlook the parking lot. So I can feel pretty confident that I can be in there working near a window. And if this is sitting on the top of my car and I see somebody kind of wandering through the parking lot, looking at cars, like they may be thinking about breaking in or stealing something, I can go outside and make sure that they don't take this, but it's a safe, it's a safe area. It's a safe town. And, and so I feel confident that I can leave this on my car for five hours each day, fully recharge this less than five hours. Cause this won't be drained down to zero. Um, but I want to make a few modifications because first of all, if I just set this on the roof of my car, it's not going to lay flat because there's some stuff here on the back that we'll get into here in a minute. And this, these are really going to draw the eye's attention to my car because they're bright orange. And so, the first thing that I want to do is I want to take these off. These are reinforcements for the handles and, and they actually have magnets in them so that this closes together. But if I want to use any type of magnets in my system, I've got magnets I can um, put into, put onto here uh, and I can be careful enough that I don't need these real heavy duty reinforcements in the handles because I'm not going to be trekking up and down trails or anywhere where this is going to get a bunch of rugged use. So I'm going to take these off because I just don't need them. And it's going to give, allow me to start the process of flattening this out and making it dark because my car is dark gray. So having this be kind of a, a little bit of gray here, really dark gray and black, it'll blend in better if I take some of this stuff off. So let me do that now. Okay, so I got those off and that looks good. Everything's dark now except for these white lines, which isn't a big deal, but I don't have the glaring orange on it anymore. So this is gonna be a little easier to overlook when it's sitting on the top of my car uh, without these pieces on it. Now, I understand that doing this to any product uh, most likely voids the warranty, but I'm okay with that because if I make some modifications to this, this is really going to work better for my needs and be much more useful to me um, than it, in its original state. But understand, you start modifying things, especially electronics um, that have warranties, uh, you're going to risk avoiding uh, that warranty. So let's look at the back here. And so here on the back, the issues that I've got are these are stands. So you can stand this up when you're camping out in the wilderness and you can aim it at the sun. I, I, I mean, this are, these are convenient if you're camping, kind of a nice feature, but what's more important to me is to make this back space flat so that I can uh, just lay it flat and flush on the top of my car. I don't feel like I need these. Even if I go camping and I want to angle this towards the light, I can lean it against, a tr against the, the refrigerator or something else or the car and angle it that way. So I just don't need this. So what I'm going to do is, take these off. And what I'm going to do is use an X-Acto knife. These are, these pieces are all sewn in. So if I'm very careful and cut the stitches, I should be able to pull those up and take these off. So let me start that process. Okay, so I got those off. This is gonna be a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit different. It's gonna be a little more tricky because it actually has this inside. This is the cord that connects to the Jackery power station and powers it. And so when the solar panels take in light, they convert that to energy. It goes through here, goes into the power station and it charges it up. So I mean, I'm gonna take this off, this bag, cause it's got these zippers, they'll scratch the car. I, so gotta get rid of that. Uh, then I'm going to look at how I might be able to modify this um, as carefully as possible to maybe move this somewhere else. So let's start by just getting rid of this first.
Okay, now we've got a flat surface except for this one piece. And so what I'm gonna do is some investigating here to make sure I'm very careful. I can feel the back of those solar panels and it's all flat through here. It's just the back of the panels, that's it. Now, once I get over here, I start to feel some wires that are wired into the back of that panel to help transfer the energy from the solar cells to this and then onto the power station. So I know that through here, there are no wires. It's all up and through here and up and through here. And I can feel these wires converging to this right up through here. So what I want to do, and this is risky, but I, I really believe that um, I can feel this thing is loose. I think I can reposition this if I get it off of here. So what I'm going to do, because I do not see any way to pop this off. Okay, I just realized that my camera quit recording because I maxed out the memory on it. So I took the video up to this part that I'd already shot and loaded it onto my computer, deleted that off the camera. Now I've got much more room and I can continue. But you missed out on some of the stuff that I did, so let me reenact for you what I did. Where it cut off, I was trying to feel around and make sure there were no wires around this. There weren't. I could feel a little ledge underneath here, like a little plastic piece flaring out with no wires on it. So I took my X-Acto and I cut around carefully and pulled this out. And that's the main component and it's attached to two wires. So what I did is I cut this back a little bit and then cut this all the way over so I could lift this up and see what was going on underneath before I started pulling and tugging on anything. One thing there was is the wire that goes this way had a piece of tape on it. So I reached in there and peeled the tape off. This one didn't, but now what I'm able to do is move this off to the side and make sure these wires are in good places back here. And now final, get finally get to a point where, um, let me flatten these wires out. Finally get to a point where everything's flat back here. Now I'm just gonna need to do a little bit of work. I'm concerned that these wires will get twisted up or pulled on. And so I'm going to tape them down underneath here just to make sure they don't pull up or anything or get damaged. So I'm going to do that first. That should hold those in place. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on on the other side now that we've made that modification. Be careful to hold this for now. Flip this over. Okay, so what we've got is this can now be placed topside on here when, and this can lay completely flat on the car, which is great, that's what we wanted. Um, and so now what I need to do is secure this so it doesn't move around. It is going to cover a little bit of the solar, um, these solar cells. That's not going to affect this much at all. So I'm not worried about that because I just don't want to move it any further um, because the wires are as far as they can reach at this point. So go back to the other side and finish taping that back up there and then we'll come back over and secure this a little better. What I did here is trying to just tape over the top of that fabric. It peels away from that fabric pretty easily. This back of this board of the solar panel is great to stick to with this electrical tape. It sticks really okay, well. Okay, I just realized I had another technical issue with my camera. And so um, this is a long video shoot and I haven't, I've got a new gimbal that my camera sits on and 
the uh, way I've connected them is I'm still experimenting with it. So anyway, what I did is I finished taping this up. And one thing I wanna say is, I think I could have just cut this fabric all out because the back of the uh, solar panel board seems to be well sealed up. But this fabric provides an extra layer of protection of that solar panel and the wires. And so I went to the extra effort of taking all these things off and leaving this on because it does help protect against bugs and, and debris and dust and other things. So I just felt like it was worth the, worth the extra uh, effort. So got all this taped up back here with the electrical tape. Now we're gonna turn it over and secure this a little better. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is use double-sided tape um, and put, this, put it underneath here to provide it a first, um, first level of adhesion to the board. Okay, now I can hear some people saying, oh man, you're covering your solar cells. There's a lot of solar cells here and to cover this small area, it's not gonna make a big difference. Uh, and this is gonna work out so much better for um, the use that I have. And so that's on there, good. Here is our solar panel that can now go on the roof of the car that we are gonna use with the power station to be able to power the refrigerator 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, so that our food stays nice and cold.